Hello friends, in this video I'm going to demonstrate for you a number of ways that you can use the Desmos graphing calculator to think about sampling and simulation within your statistics classroom. And these are things that you can do with your students in the classroom. We're going to look at simple random samples, we're going to look at sampling distributions, and then I'll show you an example of a famous problem that's used in some statistics courses, the German tanks problem. So on the screen hopefully you see many box plots going by about once, one every second. And I'll tell you, just like I would tell my students, that each of these box plots represents a random sample drawn from some large population. And the question I would have for my students is, based on these individual box plots, do you have evidence that the populations they were drawn from are approximately normal? And this is a skill that we ask students to think about, especially as we get towards inference and students drawing random samples from populations. So if you look at the box plots, you see some that maybe look a little bit more symmetric than others, some that have bigger tails. Every now and then we might see one uh, that is an outlier in it. And think about different things that students might say here. And overall, box plots don't do a great job of telling us much about the shape of a, of a random sample. But what can we infer from these box plots? Well, I'll, I'll give you the big reveal here if I turn on the expressions list here. Every single one of these box plots comes from a large population. In fact, if you look at my line one here, I've defined a normal distribution, normal dist, n equals normal dist, with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of one. And then what I did is, I drew a random sample from that population, that hypothetical population, I called it S. S is a random sample drawn from my population N, and I used a sample of size 20, in fact, let me go backwards here. Let's get rid of some of these other guys here and just kind of show you from scratch here. So I have this normal distribution, and I said, well, let S equal um, random, and notice when random is typed, the letters are no longer italicized, meaning that Desmos likes that. Uh, I'm going to take a random sample from N with sample size 20. We can change that down the road. And if I just do it once, let's just do it one time, I can now make a box plot of it. I can make box plot of that random sample. There it is. And you can even do a dot plot as well if you're a big fan of dot plots. Dot plot of S as well. And notice we can see both of those. There's my dot, dot plot. Okay. I'm just going to look at the box plot for now. So here's my box plot. Okay. And if I want to do multiple random samples, well, after 20, I'm going to put in a letter A. And anytime you put in a parameter, we like to make a slider. And we can make a slider now. And now we have this little interactive where I can make many, many random samples. And the big idea here is random samples of size 20 in fact, we should be very surprised if we see a random sample that looks very nicely symmetrical with perfect sides and adheres to the 6895 rule. It's not unusual in random samples of size 20 that we see some variability present. Here we see one whisker that is longer than the other. And we might see, let's see if I can find one eventually here, one that has some outliers to it or even a couple of outliers. Oh, there was one with two outliers. Let's see if I can get that to happen again. There it is. One that has two outliers on the low end. Okay, and if we increase the sample size to maybe 50 or so, even then, notice that we have a nice symmetric box plot here, but with outliers on both sides. And we can play this. It goes pretty fast, and you can play with the speed here and make it slow down a little bit for you students to, to look at. But that's a nice little demonstration where I can go through and have students think about that skill that tends to be tricky for students. Okay, so next we're going to graduate from simple random samples here from a hypothetical population towards the idea of a sampling distribution. Next, I'm going to show you how you can use Desmos to build a sampling distribution. And I'm very excited about this portion because this is one of Desmos's newest features. And I think it's very easy to walk through this with students. And the impact of the visual showing the population versus the sampling distribution is something that's really going to be effective with your students here. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through step by step. So I have a, a nice blank Desmos graph here. Uh, but I do need a data set. I need a population. So here in Excel, I have a population here. And this is Major League Baseball salary data. I found it online, just Googled it, and was able to find this data that I put into Excel. And notice the highest baseball salary this particular year was $43 million, a couple at 36, and goes down to 23. But this, this spreadsheet actually has 1,000 rows in it. So it's a very large population. And for convenience, I took all the salaries and divided them by 1 million because that seemed like a reasonable thing to do to keep the numbers easier to talk about. And I have them all in column D here, and they're all highlighted because if you don't know, something you can do with Desmos is you can take data from Excel, go ahead and copy it. So I'm going to take this column, uh, Control C, and copy it. And now I'm going to come back to Desmos. And in Desmos, I'm going to call this my data, D equals. 
And now just control V and here comes my data, 1000 element list copied, pasted in the Desmos. Okay, so that's a little power move there about using Excel to grab data and bring it into Desmos. Okay, so let's take a look at this population. Let's make a dot plot, dot plot of D. And right now we can't see the dot plot very well because we need to change the window settings. Desmos has us covered though. We have this little guy on the far left called Zoom Fit. I like to call it the spyglass. If I click that, it's gonna make a nice window here for us. And also right now my dot plot, uh, it's showing exact values. I kind of like bend in this situation so all the dots are kind of lined up. That's just my organizational nature at work here. But notice we have this wonderful, clearly right skewed distribution. And the reason is Major League Baseball's uh, minimum salary is $700,000. And there's many players who make that amount. So you have this big bar of almost 600 players who are right at 0.7 or just a little bit above 0.7. So we have this great right skewed distribution. And now we're going to draw some random samples from it and find out what hap happens with the sampling distribution. All right, so first let's draw some random samples. So I'm going to call this uh, S just for sample. I like to use S for sample at times. And I'm going to take a sample size of 30 and we're going to compute the mean of that sample. So we're going to call this mean. Uh, need some parentheses here. D dot random. Random. And we're going to do a sample size of 30. And I see that I have a mean of 4.129. Okay, so that is my sample mean for a sample of size 30. Seems like it's right around here. Okay, I could also display that graphically, maybe with a, a vertical line, X equals just S. There's my sample mean. Okay, I can click on that. But something wonderful happens with Desmos whenever you randomly sample. You may not have noticed, but right here below the uh, black toolbar on top, we now have this double arrow. That's a re-randomize button. So if I click that, it's going to re-randomize, draw some new random samples, and we can take a look and see how this thing behaves. And notice it's venturing kind of between 2 and 5 so far, 3.882, 4.13, 3 3.68. These are random samples, samples of size 30. So what we want to do is look at what happens with repeated samples of the same size from the same population. So we're getting towards that idea of a sampling distribution. 5.6, I think, is my highest so far. But really, they seem to be bounded kind of between two and five and a half so far. So we have some idea of what's going on. But I want to do this over and over. I'd like to do this a whole bunch of times and get an idea of a simulated sampling distribution, maybe with 200 different samples in it. Well, we can do that. Let's go back up to line three, where we have S equals. I'm just going to take this line of code and adapt it just a little bit. We're going to make this a list of sample means. So if I want a list, I need square braces. Notice where I'm putting it here at the beginning. So I have this mean of D, taken a sample size of 30. And now it's going to be for I equals. So we're going to do this over and over for I equals. And now I'm going to make a list, 1 comma dot 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 200. Okay, now let's get rid of this X equals S for a minute. Okay. So what this did, let me pull this apart so you can see a little bit better here. So what we have here is we're going to draw a sample mean, and we're going to keep that doing that over and over 200 times for i equals 1 to 200. And notice i isn't used in any formula here. That's just a syntax to build the sampling distribution. So now what I have here is I have a list of 200 different sample means stored in memory. So let's see what we can do with that. So what I would like to do with that is now we want to see all those guys. So I would like to make a dot plot of this. Let's make a dot plot of those sample means. Oh, there it is, sitting there in the bottom. Let's zoom in on that. Let's see what's going on there. Oh, that looks really kind of cool. Notice we kind of have a little uh, kind of pyramid type shape. What would students say here? Again, it's showing exact values. Well, let's bin those and see what happens here. Oh, it's going from two to three to four to five to six. I even have one at seven. I'd like to get more detail here. So maybe my bin width, instead of one, notice it defaulted to one. Maybe I want the bin width to be 0.1. Oh, let's, let's zoom in on that. And now here is my sampling distribution. Let's turn off the red dots for a moment. There is my sampling distribution, 200 different random samples. And I could even toy around with the, uh, the bins here and see what's happening here. So there is my sampling distribution. I kind of like point one a little bit better, okay? But notice we don't have a right skewed distribution anymore. I'm not saying it looks totally approximately normal. We have some peaks going on here. Maybe I want to sample again and see what's happening and do that repeatedly and get an idea of what's happening here. But definitely we have random samples. The sample means seem to have a bound between about, what is this, 1.8 maybe? 1.5 up to 6.8.
And now there's a couple things I can do here. Maybe I want my simulated sampling distribution to have more samples. Let's go up to uh, 1,000. We can do 1,000 of them. Oh, uh, wow, that looks great. There's my 1,000. Ooh, what do we see there? What do we notice? What do we wonder? A little bit more. It's kind of approximately normal-ish. Maybe it's pulled a little bit to the one side, but that's because we have random samples of size 30. What if I take random samples of size, let's do 80. What's going to happen if I change the sample size? Change to 80. Oh, and notice our sampling distribution is less variable than it was before. And perhaps the extension here is, uh, I'm going to copy this line of code. Let me show you how you can copy this. I'm going to edit this list. I'm going to take a copy. I didn't, I didn't think about doing this, so I didn't rehearse this piece. So let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to duplicate this one. And maybe what I can do here is instead of having just S and S, let's have S and T. Maybe T is random samples of size 30, and S is random samples of size 80. And now let's do a dot plot of T. Let's do a dot plot of T and see what happens. There's my dot plot of t and also one point ones. Now let's compare and contrast. Oh, and isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's kind of hard to see them both, but I can turn them on and off. There's samples of size. Uh, that one is the size uh, 80s versus the size 30s, and we can talk about the variability now. So it's really this line of code here that takes a little bit of passes to kind of learn, but once you learn it, you can build sampling distributions now. So have fun with that. What I do in my Desmos is I keep this, uh, I keep a, a file of this, I save this, and whenever I need to think about sampling distributions, I have it all set to go and, and to remember how to do the commands. So we have sampling distributions. I'm gonna show you one last example now of a famous problem from statistics, the German tanks problem. All right, to close out this video, I want to show you an example of a famous problem from statistics, and this is the German tanks problem. Um, the German tanks problem, I'm going to drop a link to an example that you can download and think about for your class. It'll be in the description of this video. If you're not familiar with the German tanks problem, just very briefly, we have this idea that we have a population that is numbered from one to some number, but we don't know what that number is, and we draw a random sample. And we're going to use the random sample we draw to try to conjecture how many tanks there are, what the highest number in the list is. Um, so this is called the German tanks problem. I've also done it using raffle tickets. If you imagine raffle tickets numbered from one to some high number, um, and we draw five tickets, can we conjecture how many tickets were sold? Um, so this is an example that I use. Uh, notice that I, when you do this with students, the students aren't supposed to know how many tanks there were. So I have this conveniently located in a folder called Brussels sprouts because whoever looks at Brussels sprouts, but I'll show you a little bit behind uh, the um, action here. I have a population here. My tanks go from one to 820 different tanks. So it's really things that are numbered from one to 820. So let's toy around with this a little bit. So we're gonna draw a random sample. So we can do, um, so we're gonna do S equals. So again, I'm gonna take my random sample uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw five things and I'm gonna take the mean. So I'm gonna take the mean and again, I'm gonna draw from, oh, what did I call it? What letter did I use? Did I used N, I used N. So we're gonna use N dot random and we're gonna draw five. And notice that my mean is 340.4. And we could do that over and over again. And the question you might have for students is, do you think that the mean would be a good estimator of how many tanks there are? And keep in mind, the students don't know how many tanks there are. And the idea for students is to try to come up with some kind of formula, some sort of method to try to estimate how many tanks there are based on the five numbers they draw here. And hopefully they agree that the mean won't be a good estimator because there's certainly numbers that are higher than the mean. So maybe what students wanna to try to do is maybe do two times the mean. Now, maybe that's a good estimator. We can take a look at those, okay? And what we would like to do is we would like to do this a bunch of times with our, with our new capability of doing a sampling distribution. Maybe we wanna do this method, so I'll stick with the two times the mean method. Uh, let's do this, make a, a sampling distribution. Let's do it a, a hundred times. So I put it in, in brackets, and now I need four I equals my braces, one comma dot, 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 100, okay? So now I have 100 different numbers, which are two times the mean when I draw five random tanks. And we want to take a look at these. So we'll do a dot plot of, of S, we'll do a zoom fit, and there they are. Now keep in mind, we know, because we're the teachers, that there are 820 different tanks. So right now, does this seem to do a good job of centering around the true population uh, value, which is 820 here? 
Well, kind of, sort of. It looks like if I were to guess where the middle of this distribution is, it looks like it's around 800, maybe a little bit higher. Okay, I could actually take the mean of S and find out. I think I would take the mean of S, center at 809.64. Okay, but what I'm not happy about is look at the variability. We got once uh, using this two times the mean method. I have one time where uh, my my guess, my estimate would be 281.2, and my highest is 1258.8. So certainly this is a a method that produces high variability, although the bias seems like it's not so bad, maybe a little tolerable. We're kind of around 800, okay? But what we could also do here is we could toy around with this formula. There may be two times the median. Is that better? Is two times the median better? It seems like we have more variability, less variability. And what I want to show with this method is there's something else you could do here. We could also think of this as a function. So notice I've gotten rid of a few things here. Let me make a function. Maybe my function, I'm going to call it f of x, is the um, mean of x plus, maybe the mean plus the median. I'm just going to make one up. Maybe the mean plus the median of x does it. I, I don't know why I would think that, but that's going to be my function. Well, now if I come back up to where I'm my s, I can call it f of that. And the beauty of this now is that students can now take this function and manipulate it and maybe try to find a, a, a statistic that has less variability. And I'll just point out a couple here. So we do mean plus the median. Uh, another one you could do is you could do the mean plus two, maybe two standard deviations. Two times the standard deviation of x. Oh, notice that seems to have a little less variability. Uh, there are some methods, and you're going to research these if you look up German tanks. Maybe you want one that somehow takes the min and the max and does something with them. Maybe you take the min and the max and divide that somehow and use that as your estimate. So students can toy around with different formulas that will give an estimate for the number of German tanks there were. So I did want to show you sampling with one famous problem here, and I'll drop a description of the problem in the comments. So overall, I hope you found some value in these ideas for random sampling with Desmos, and you're able to use them in your classes.